the good news is that Ghana still remains a favored nation in both the spiritual and physical realms. What we need now is a transformational leader, a paradigm shift in our government system, as well as a mindset change amongst Ghanaians. We have an opportunity in the general elections in December this year to cross that bridge and move Ghana into a new era of peace and prosperity by electing me as the first independent candidate to become the president of the republic. I will install a new government of national unity that will mobilize the collective strengths and talents of all Ghanaians and not only really a privileged few, irrespective of ethnic, political, or religious affiliation. Ladies and gentlemen, both the NDC and NDP have had the opportunity of being in charge of this country. For the last 32 years, I believe in all sincerity that they have exhausted their competences and capabilities and ought not to be restored or retained in power, considering the fact that they have not demonstrated either by word or deed that they have any plan for Ghana. Five months to a general election, we are still waiting for the manifestos of our two leading parties. Between the two leading parties, they have over the three decades that they have been in power, resorted to extensive borrowing to finance their manifesto promises. The culture of unrestrained borrowing is what has landed us into the ditch in which we find ourselves. A significant component of the loans that have been applied have gone into financing consumption, the repayment of existing loans, and investments in social services that typically do not generate any economic returns in the immediate, short to medium term, and therefore limit our capacity to carry those But ladies and gentlemen, I have a plan. I have a plan. The great transformational plan, which will build an enterprise economy in Ghana, focusing on private enterprise, innovation, and the unleashing of the entrepreneurial spirit of the people of Ghana. This is what will take Ghana forward to occupy its rightful place in the community of nations as the black star of Africa the shining star of Africa, and the first country south of the Sahara to become independent. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this is why we are here today, to launch the most comprehensive policy framework, the GTP, that will move Ghana from instability to stability, to growth, to resilience, and to prosperity. The GDP is comprised of six interrelated clusters, economic, governance, infrastructure, social services, environment, and natural resource management, and last but not the least, behavioral and mindset change. Each cluster has a number of pillars, thematic areas, and policy solutions. The plan is significantly different.
from the party manifestos that have been presented by the two political parties that have been in power in Ghana for decades. The policy, the policy solutions under the GTP are concise, clear, and action oriented. The regulations for, you for the repatriation of proceeds from exports. Yes. And yet, nobody respects the regulations. Yes. Review and strengthen existing legislation to limit the use of foreign currency in domestic commercial transactions, particularly in the services sector. Everybody wants to charge dollars. And meanwhile, that is not your currency. And if you are charging dollars for every activity, how do you hope to stabilize your currency? There are countries, even in Africa, where not under any circumstances would they accept dollars or any other foreign currency to pay for services. Yes. Increase the supply of foreign exchange in the economy by actively promoting exports and also reducing imports through import substitution by providing incentives to the private sector. How many times have you heard a Ghanaian head of state talk about exports? But alas, if you want to stabilize your currency, that is the only solution. Because it is only when you have a consistent and substantial flow of current currency that is chasing the dollar that you can stabilize your local currency.